lot of people don't like the word defilement. And it's not just modern people in the West. You go way back in Buddhist history, there are people who are saying, well, as long as you realize that defilements are not real, then they have no power over you, and that's the end of the problem. And that particular attitude has managed to hang on in the Buddhist tradition up to the present. But the problem with that is, if you say defilements like greed, aversion, and delusion are unreal, or they're not even defilements, it's like saying that when there's dirt in your house, it's not really dirt. It's just a natural part of the, the floor and the natural part of the wall. And you're just going to leave it there. You never know what it's like to have a really clean house. And that's the whole <clears throat> purpose in having a teaching on defilement, is to realize that the mind could be a lot brighter than it is. It could be polished. It can be cleaned. That would be a much nicer mind to be with. So instead of taking the word defilement as an affront to your dignity, think of it as a very useful concept. After all, there are parts of the mind that get in the way of practicing virtue. There are parts that get in the way of practicing concentration, get in the way of practicing discernment. Those are the defilements. If they're cleaned away from the mind, the mind is going to be a lot brighter. How do you clean them away? One is to learn how to gain a sense of distance from them. The reason they have power over us is that they disguise themselves as us. Greed comes in, we assume that it's our greed, it's the way we feel about that particular object we want. And it's our wanting. The same with anger. We're angry. Delusion sneaks up on us and doesn't let us know it's there, but it's there. And we identify with whatever deluded ideas it may bring. And so this is where the concept of the Committee of the Mind is actually useful. Because all too often the idea of the Committee of the Mind, we see that as a problem, because the mind has so many desires and so many different wants, that there's a lot of conflict inside. And all those different voices can often get in the way of getting the mind to settle down and be still. But the good side of having a committee the positive side of it is that you can identify with the discernment, you can identify with the mindfulness, you can identify with all the other good voices in the mind, and step back from the voices of greed, aversion, and delusion. Look at them from the outside. After all, when you look at anger in somebody else, it's obviously a, pro a problem. You look at greed in somebody else, it's obviously a weakness. So you want to be able to see your own anger and your own greed in that way. So we develop the, the path. We develop all the different strengths of the mind that the Buddha talks about, conviction and the Buddha's awakening, conviction and the power of action, persistence in trying to give rise to skillful qualities and abandon unskillful ones, Mindfulness to keep all this in mind so the mind can get into concentration and have a sense of its home, where it can stay apart from the greed, aversion, and delusion. And then the discernment to take them apart. When greed comes in, you want to be able to see why you're attracted to it. The same with anger, lust, jealousy. These things all have their attractive side. And if you don't admit that to yourself, you're never going to be able to get past them. But you also have to see the drawbacks. It's in seeing the drawbacks and weighing them against the attractive side. That's when you can finally get past them, because you can see they really are stains on the mind. They really obscure a lot of the clarity that could be there in the mind. You're better off without them. The problem, of course, is that we tend to feed off of the allure. As we said, this is what gives spice to life. That's the flavor that we get from the greed or the aversion, 
or the lust, or the jealousy. So we need a sense of well-being in the concentration. So that can be our food as we peel away from our old feeding habits. You realize that we've been feeding on dirt. It's like that Far Side cartoon where the cows are in the pasture and one of them jerks her head up and says, Hey, wait a minute, this is grass. We've been eating grass. Well, we've been eating dirt. We've been eating all the stains in the mind. But because they're dressed up with a little bit of spice, we think they're really good. So now we've got to feed the mind on better things. The food of concentration may not be as exciting, may not be as spicy, but it is nourishing. And it does strengthen the mind. So we can withstand some of the appeal of those defilements and step back from saying, this really is dirt in the mind. We're ready to start cleaning it away. Learn to see where we perceive the attraction, where we perceive the need to identify with these things. And learn to question that. A lot of discernment is in the questioning of things we don't usually question, things we just assume. The mind's going to have to have these emotions we assume. Well, why? Why do we have to run with them when they do come up? Why do we have to embroider them further? Because it's not the case that they just simply arise full-blown on their own. We're implicated in the process. A little something comes in the mind, a little stirring. And depending on what we want at that point, we'll identify the stirring as something, and then we run with it. So you have to question the perceptions you apply to these things. When something gets you angry, take the perception apart. If it is what that person has said or done really all that bad? And even if it's all that bad, is anger justified? Is it going to help you at all? If it's something you really have to deal with, anger is going to get in the way because you're not going to be able to see things clearly. The same with greed. You start doing all kinds of things under the power of greed. Same with lust. These things make us their slaves. So however you perceive the drawbacks, whether that's just a stain on the mind that obscures its clarity, or somebody that comes in and turns you into a slave, whatever you can see to realize that these are things you don't want to get involved with. Recognize that they're there and learn how to pull yourself away from them. When the Buddha said that the mind is luminous, and the defilements come in and visit. He's not saying that we're, we have a pure nature to begin with. If our nature were pure, then we wouldn't go for the defilements anyhow. But the luminous quality of the mind, I mean, that's a clarity. That you can actually see things, you can begin to see. When you follow this particular unskillful state, these are the consequences. And you can see when the unskillful state rises in the mind, you can start seeing the stages by which it comes. In the place where there's a little bit of allure and you go for the allure. And then you swallow down the whole hook along with the bait. It's this luminous quality of the mind that allows us to see these things, to step back from the greed or the aversion or the delusion or all the other. It's subsidiary defilements. And then we benefit. We realize that the mind is a lot cleaner than it was before. It's a lot brighter than it was before. It's less likely to be picked up by these things and dragged around. And that's when you see the benefit of the teaching. It's really good to be reminded again and again and again. Greed, aversion, and delusion are stains on the mind. They are faults in the mind. And there's a way to get past them. The fact that we can have different members of the mind that allows us to step away from them. If the mind was just totally one identity, and it were defiled by nature, there'd be nothing you could do. You'd have to wait for some help from outside. 
good here is the fact that the mind does have that clarity, that luminous nature where it can see what's going on inside. And it's got members of the committee that can be strengthened, skillful members that can be strengthened so they can step back and view the defilements as, as alien. That's something that doesn't have to be there, something that's intruded in on the mind. That means you can do something about this yourself. You can clean out your mind. So keep that thought in mind all the time. The mind could be a lot brighter than it is, a lot happier than it is. Some people take that as a burdensome thought. There's something more to be done, and they'd like to hear that there's nothing more they need to do. Well, they just want to live with the dirt. Tell themselves that it's not dirt. But they never get to see what a really clean mind would be like. The Buddha is saying this not to burden you with an extra unpleasant duty. He's saying this is an opening, this is a possibility where you could find what it's like to have a really good mind. The goodness is so good that you don't need, will never need anything else. It's just the teaching of defilement as something that's really helpful. And that'll open the way for you to get the most out of it. <laughs>